This is a little bit snapshot of my life when I started a new job. Um, and this is what we were tasked with, was making something web scale in 15 days. Um, so I started a new job at Infinity Works, fresh off the boat, so to speak. I'd spent the last few years working in various bits of the industry. And my director says, I've got something for you. I've been sitting on the bench for about two weeks, starting to do my Amazon qualifications, and he gave me a present. And that present, after he went away, something popped out of it I'd never heard of before. Um, has anyone heard of Laravel? Yeah. I hadn't. So, um, yeah, made me cry. So a little bit about me. Um, I cut my teeth uh, building a network for a special school over four years. Knew nothing about Windows, really. And then ended up building Windows 2000 domain, 65 servers, several wireless um, laptops talking to it, all running specialist software, visual impairment, learning difficulties. And then I automated my way out of that job, joined the um, BBC as a broad trainee broadcast engineer, learned everything about news gathering from source to output. So filming, editing, studio work, the entire lot. Uh, and then moved over to um, the red button service and built automated systems for uh, developers. So a developer wanted a virtual machine. Now, I should say there's a four year gap between most of these things. So to give you an idea, this is automated machines on things like Zen, back when Zen was a thing. Uh, it isn't anymore. Uh, then moved to the BBC web platform in 2012, which is supporting 400 or so developers across 160 development teams on an old PHP um, LAMP stack. Um, and then we built uh, a CMDB for AWS. So that was a thing called Cosmos, an abstraction layer so that all BBC staff members, a bit similar to the talk we just had, a way of having in, everyone being able to interact with AWS. Um, and then at the Telegraph, uh, culture change. So various weird and wonderful things. So everything that I'd done so far had been a change, and then all of a sudden you get another change. So it's another NDA project, because everything we do. So I've got a box. Out of it comes Laravel. Amazon Web Services comes out, something I recognize. This is good. So that's a good start and a Rockstar developer pops out. Now, how many of you have worked with Rockstar developers before? Few? Yeah. Did you get the Mm-hmm. Very interesting package. <laughs> so, he then says I've got 15 days to make Laravel work at scale on the web with a Rockstar developer, and if I don't do it, the company goes bust. So, um, this was a lead from Amazon where someone had to get something out for a deadline and they've only got 15 days. So, oh yeah, working in an NDA sucks, by the way. This is the sort of thing you end up starting with. So this was the wish list on the thing we signed the contract for for 15 days. Enable the application to scale to meet demand, fully automated, yada, yada, yada. You've seen it all before. Basically, while the thing's running, it must not fail. They must be able to service it themselves, and it must be cheap. Oh, also, we have to provide full training on everything we've done. Good, right? We've all been in this position, but I've never been providing the moon on a stick in 15 days before. I really haven't. So let's have a look at the good stuff. Codes in GitHub, that's a good start. At least they've got code. I've worked on things where someone's given me a CD and said, there's my code repository. The developer is also the CTO. So we're talking to the guy who has not only written the code, but also paying the bill and assessing whether we've delivered. So that's a bit hairy. But still, at least he's making himself available, and he's giving us full keys to their Amazon account. Uh, we have Slack, which is good. It means we can actually talk to the guy, because he's miles away. Obviously, working closely with them would be useful. Can't do that. Um, I've got one day of discovery. And thank God I'm not alone. Two of us start at the same, go at the same time. Um, Zolt, Colscar, start at the same week. So we've got two DevOps guys. We haven't really worked together before, but at least we've kind of hopefully think differently. And over the next few days, I'm going to find out exactly how good he is. So day one, it's a responsive messaging application. Uh, anyone who's done machine learning, this is a machine learning messaging application. You send out a message, someone sends a reply, it gives you an intelligent response. Not the easiest thing in the world to test. Also, it's in production. They've already got 15 clients running on this thing. So we're not allowed to bring that down while we bring the infrastructure up. Um, 
there is a test environment, but, well, it's a snowflake, like everything else. So the components are web server, MySQL database, two DNS providers, of which I'm assured we only use one. More on that later. There is a queue, so it should scale. There are some workers, and there's a whole load of third-party APIs for handling things like email, SMS messaging, you know, all the communication stuff. Unfortunately, it's using Laravel Forge. You given by the raise of hands about Laravel earlier. Laravel Forge is a way of deploying your app safely and easily. But it's all on one box. So those queues, those workers, that database, everything is on one box in an EC2 instance in an account with a Laravel Forge script providing the glue. So I've only got 14 days left and I've already got an un undocumented single snowflake system and I don't know anything really about it. Oh yeah, and I can't talk to anyone about this because we're under an NDA, so I can't say, has anyone else had this problem before? Because then we lose it. So this is what I did. I had a look at the architecture and drew what I thought it might look like. Now, anyone who's worked with me before, and I've looked around the room and maybe none of you have, um, <laughs> I think in block diagrams, this is how my brain works. I look at a problem and I split it out into lots of little boxes. So I thought, well, we've got a load balancer. So we've got, on this side, we've got a consumer. This is the person we're sending the message to. On the other side, we've got a customer. That customer is the person we're writing the messaging app for. The person we're not allowed to talk about, obviously. Um, so the load balancer going to some web app somewhere. Um, that when the message comes to the web app, it should probably put on a queue. Um, that queue will be read by a worker farm, keep the database updated, and send out the messages as they come through. Fairly simple structure. Uh, there's a bit there which says, here be dragons. We'll come to that a bit later. So we broke the problem down. Week one, build a VPC. Uh, we chose CloudFormation mainly because on a tight deadline, we'd all built it before, um, so we could just reuse some old code. Uh, create a continuous deployment pipeline because it must be continuous delivery, of course, in 15 days, because why not? Um, so we started to use Circle CI because it's integrated straight with GitHub. Um, and aim to automatically deploy the full stack from a single command line because we don't want the guy to have to work too hard, obviously. Um, I had to deconstruct the application. Now, by deconstruct, I meant I had to go into Laravel, learn a bit how the PHP worked, talk to the developer, worked how that worked, and then hand a package to Zolt so that he could then deploy it in a fully automated fashion. Um, and obviously, we had to migrate the single point of failure components, MySQL database, queues, into something scalable. Uh, do a quick analysis, gap analysis between test and prod to find out what's different, uh, and then deconstruct the Laravel forward scripts to find out what they do. There's a bit there about DNS SSL because it has to be secure. It has to scale, has to be contacted all across the world. Oh, well, I forgot to mention, it's 15 man days. Um, so between the two of us, one day of discovery, seven days each. <sighs> so when Thursday came along, so six days to go, three days each. A URL shortener, you know that here be dragons bit? That apparently was critical to the entire application. When they sent to a web client, they sent them a shortened URL and they communicated with a shortened URL. Without that, nothing works. So, um, yeah, needless to say, that was a difficult pill to swallow um, at this stage in. It's also written in Laravel. It also uses a different T, uh, DNS provider. Now, we were going to use Route 53 um, because it's fairly simple, and we thought, oh, they've already got DNS, we don't need it. Uh, then we discovered that the DNS referring doesn't work with cheap DNS providers. You cannot delegate a subdomain on a cheap DNS provider, it just doesn't do it. So all of a sudden, we had to rework DNS as well. So that's when we went back to Route 53, uh, created a subdomain uh, in Route 53, and then did CNAME mapping to make that feature work. Uh, and that meant we could use the cheap Amazon SSL certificates. Remember I said it was cheap? Well, we wanted to give by a couple of certificates a thousand pounds each. No, not allowed to. So I had some cheaper ones, but it had to work across all legacy mobile devices, Android, iPhones, all the, all the works, and some of the older certificates or cheaper certificates don't work out the box. The only good thing about it is because it was a Laravel app, it already mapped to some of the automation we'd already done because it's some bit of PHP hosted in Apache, which we can then wrap up. So under that is now this link shortener here. 
Again, another load balancer, again behind SSL. So the last four days, should I go back to the other bit to show you what we did? No, it's probably not, it's probably okay. Um, we had to deploy a parallel prod environment, add monitoring and scaling on a queue length, and document everything. And I had, so this is our last two days essentially, I had to train the developer, load test the application. Now this is something that, um, have you ever trained anyone in how to use JMeter in six hours? <laughs> I don't recommend it, especially not at a new job, when your director's saying, oh, is it done yet? That nice, easy task you were just giving you. Um, and yeah, document all the things. So uh, we came up with the JMeter test plan. We worked out it could do 150 transactions a second. Um, we then broke the hell out of it. So um, we, had, uh, we knew it was an Apache web server. We stuck on um, as many messages on the queues as we could. We swapped the queues out for SQS queues, which involved working with the developer to make the change. MySQL became RDS. Um, now, this is where the other little wrinkle came in. That single database was also in production, also being used, also had to be migrated seamlessly, um, which we managed to do by waiting for the 15 minutes a day when the service wasn't being used and quickly doing a switch. But obviously, we didn't tell the CTO that. So um, what we actually achieved is something that survived it and let the company meet its goal. Now, the only reason we managed to make the deadline is there were three of us who talked incredibly closely. Um, we managed to reuse an awful lot of old components uh, and we broke the problem down into lots and lots of little blocks. And all we actually achieved at the end of it is we made the PG Tips monkey talk to people for comic relief. And that's about all I can tell you.